What's going on everybody, it's your man Corey and today I have a special guest on the Digital Dash. This guy right here, man, is pretty much the guy that I go to anytime you hit me up asking me about publishing. It's something that I don't completely understand <laughs> myself. But I got my guy with me, David, man, publishing guru, man, here to drop some game with y'all. Appreciate you for coming through, bro. How you doing? Good, man. Thanks for having me, bro. Yeah, man. Yeah, Anytime, man. Yeah, so, sure. just for the people that are watching, man, the people that aren't familiar with you, I guess give a little bit of your background. Let us know. How did you How did you even get to publishing? What's your journey been like? Give us all the good stuff. All right. Um, so, when I was 12 or 10, I used to look at the back of vinyl records, and my granddad used to play for like big people like James Brown, Jackie Wilson. Uh, he's in a documentary called Muscle Show, it's on Netflix, um, it's pretty dope. But anyways, just seeing his name on there was just cool, like just seeing his name printed on the back of something. And he always tell me, do you think my name is cool? Think about the songwriters, the producers, and the publishers. Mm -hmm. So he hit me up to game like early, so, um, so then I just, I played drums for a long time. Then I started booking rock bands, got into that. Then I went to a show, one of the guys was like, hey, that song you placed in the movie, that's a sync license. I was like, what's a sync license, you know? So I was like, you know, he's like film and TV placement, you know? So basically like, kept asking questions. He's like, hey man, I'm going to Nashville next weekend. You want to hang out? I was like, okay. I didn't even know this guy. I just met him at this show. So went to Nashville, showed me Music Row, introduced me to some people, some publishers. We're still cool to this day. Um, basically that was my world. Like, okay, that's what I want to do. I gotta figure out how to get in that world. Mm -hmm. So it's like Silicon Valley. You see something that's tangible, just go there and figure it out and you're working the space, mm -hmm. you know? So basically that's kind of how I got in from there. Just word is what a sync license was. So now five years later, um, I got placements to sync license. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so was your, I guess, going into the sync license and stuff, was it was your first job just more so about learning the process of pitching music to supervisors or what what was that i guess that early process in there what did it look like um so basically i interned three years in country music and publishing which was the best thing ever because i got to learn actually the chain of command from a songwriter mm. a publisher a song plugger um a sync rep, all these terms that I got to hear in everyday office, like going to meetings, uh, going to different labels. Just, uh, so I started off in the beginning, I would just go like pitch songs to other uh, other songwriters. Yeah. That's how I started. I was a song plugger in the beginning. So I was, but I didn't care. Like back in the day, they used to carry like stuff of CDs and tapes. I didn't. I just, just carried my little phone and mm -hmm. I could, you know, had the Google Drive on there. But then from there, I was like, man, this is cool. Then I got into pitching for film and TV, which was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, that was, got on some indie films. That's not too crazy, but got some indie films. That was pretty fun. Um, then after that, I was like, okay, it's more to this. Yeah. And I'd come down to Atlanta and nobody would like really understand what I was saying. So I was like, hmm. Then there's the administration side which is all about the, meta, the metadata. Metadata is money. So that just basically from there, that's why I was like, okay, that's what I want to do. Because mm -hmm. I can help out some people here. Mm -hmm. you know, register them songs. Um, from there, you can get paid. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so so I guess let's, let's back up a little bit. And um, So we, we're always talking about like publishing and stuff on the channel, like talking to artists about getting their paperwork together. And of course we have artists that come through the channel that are a little bit more established, that know what's up, but we do get a large group of like artists who like don't understand any of this. So for right. those artists that are looking at, explain to them what exactly publishing is and why they should care about it. Okay, um, that's a very good question. Uh, a lot of people say, Oh, I don't have much money out there. Why is nothing out there for me to collect? If you have some streams, you got money to collect and you got two to three years to collect it or it goes into the black box of royalties. Um, so publishing, so there's three types of publish, maybe you start publishing deals or right. is that a good place maybe? Um, we'll just say copyright. What, what is a copyright? Mm. Uh, copyright is, the term is a limited duration monopoly and copyright is 
lifetime plus 70 years. Um, so then anything that you write down or you sing on your phone, anything that's tangible that is copywritten. Mm. Um, now, if you just have this idea in your head and you never tell them, you never like put it on paper or anything, then it's not, um, it's not copywritten. You can't even copyright that. Okay. Um, but it, then once you have a song, it's good to register your song with the copyright office. <laughs> um, costs $35, but it's intellectual property. That is an asset to you that you own. Um, so, and then I guess from there, let's talk about what a song actually is. A song has two copyrights. Mm. You got the sound recording and the music composition. Sound recording is usually what the label owns. And the music composition is what the publishing company is in control of. I'm not gonna say own because sometimes they don't own it, but I'm on the composition side. I'm making sure um, monitoring the plays that is getting paid, um, the collection, and just helping adding value to the song of whether I can pitch it to somebody or somebody wants to sample one of my guys or collab. Um, it's just multiple ways. But so going back to the whole music composition side, uh, why you need publishing? Because you own that asset. You can own you can sign a bad label deal mm. and still own your publishing. Okay. Yeah, you can as long as you didn't sign like a 540 deal. That's a such thing as a 540 deal. Okay. Wait, what's that? <laughs> it's when they fuck you out with your ways. Okay. <laughs> it's publishing, merch, touring, um I like ancillary stuff like if you order food or something, they they just they take that too. Um <laughs> Like, yeah, your cell phone bill, some crazy label stuff. Um, yeah, so you can just be careful. Don't ever sign your publishing away. Um, but you got to, like, it's good to start your own publishing company for the simple fact you own that asset. So, like, when you sign up with BMI or ASCAP, uh, am I going too fast? Is it about the right speed? No, well, this is so actually, even before you get into the, the starting the publishing company stuff, let's kind of, I guess, stick around like more so of uh, 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 like what publishing is. Because I do want to get into that. Yeah. But I, I kind of want to get into that from the, the stance of like going with um, some of these other entities out here versus like doing exactly what you're about to talk about. So sticking with kind of like the, I guess, the need for publishing companies or publishing in general for artists. So publishing is pretty much the, the composition and the writing of the song, artists need publishers to help them keep track of where the song is being used outside of just the artists themselves. Is that is that like a, a, a fair way, like the fair amount of like, I guess, work to put onto what publishing companies do? Is that like accurate? Yeah, yeah. Um, so the basis of what a publishing company do is exportation of okay. the song, administration was the collection, um, and then the monitoring and the licensing of the song, protecting the copyrights. Okay. And then you got the creative side, is which is pitching songs for sync, or just like, you know, getting two producers together to make something awesome music so they can go pitch it to uh, Katy Perry or whoever. Okay. And then development, because the, that's the biggest thing in Nashville when everybody works on in country music is development. Like, they see something in somebody they gonna sign them for like maybe a two year deal, but they gotta develop. They gotta get get them out there called doing a thing called co writes, and Nashville's called co write, and there's this term in Nashville called the Nashville co write. <laughs> Nashville co write means basically me and you get in the room, and it's automatically 50 50, or whoever the people in the room. That's what the Nashville co write is. How many people are in the room? That's how many people get uh, on the splits on what's called a split sheet. Uh, hip hop is a little different. Sometimes I've seen 15 writers on one song, and like you get 2.5 percent or 0.30 percent. You don't really get any money like that, but I mean you can get something, but it's it's a pain. But um, yeah, um, so that's basically what a publishing company does: is okay. admin, um, collection, uh, ex exportation, development, and creative. Okay, so I guess then let's go into what you were about to bring up is so what does it what does it look like for an artist to I guess start their own publishing company or even I guess even before you answer that is it mm -hmm. is it feasible for an artist to start their own publishing company or would it make more sense for them to go with someone who already has 
this in place like it depends like if you're on the level of you have a song with 21 Savage you're a producer mm. or you got uh, depending on how many streams on YouTube if you have X amount you should start your own publishing company and let somebody on the back end like me come in and admin for you basically I just manage your catalog okay. make sure um, I'm the data guy uh, just bring me a, bring me your data I'm a service to you I work for you you know mm. um now, if somebody's smaller or they just don't want to be bothered with it, because uh, basically how administration works, uh, publishing administration deal is the copyright owner, which is the producer or the songwriter, or sometimes the artist. So, country and hip hop is so crazy. Nashville hardly the artists write their own songs. So that's why they're songwriters. Okay. Technically, in hip hop, the producer is a songwriter. So, mm -hmm. so, in country, you have what they do is called fifty percent for the lyrics and fifty percent for the music. Mm -hmm. So it's fifty fifty. Okay. In hip hop, you got this crazy shit going on with these German guys sending loops to these guys in Atlanta right now. Mm -hmm. So you got the melody, then you got the beat, and then you got the lyrics. Okay. So there's three already splits automatically. Okay. Because somebody's building the beat around the loop and then the guys put lyrics on top of it. Yeah, okay. okay. So it's not 50 50. Unless the loop guys get screwed. Somebody's getting screwed if it's 50 50. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody is. Let's just be real. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just. And there's no right way to do the splits. It's not like, oh, you should get 25 or you should, if, if you do the loop. Or you should get 10 if you. Do the B, or if you do lyrics, you should get 13. There's no right way, it's just don't be a douche. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just don't be a douche. You just have to be fair with everybody. Okay. Um, so I guess let, let's kind of, I guess, step into more so the establishment side of it. So uh, we hear a lot about like Ask Out, we hear a lot about BMI, we hear a lot about Sound Exchange, mm -hmm. Harry Fox. What exactly is the difference between? Going to those different, they're called PROs, right? Like performance is, is that the correct yeah. approach? Yeah, BMI, ASCAP, or PROs. Okay. Uh, Sign Exchange is an entity for itself. Um, so, yeah, I can start there. Yeah. You, you do it. Yeah, you're right. BMI, and ASCAP, or PROs. So, uh -huh. funny story about BMI. Um, <laughs> I gotta gotta be careful what I say, but I really don't give a fuck. Um, so, BMI in 2005 actually invented the Shazam technology. There's a entity, BMI is a face. There's an entity that runs the BMI called Landmark Digital. Um, basically, what they do is they have all the data, but they don't give it out. Okay. They, yeah, it's, it, Google it. It's crazy. <laughs> it's insane. Um, ASCAP, I don't really know too. I did, they do the same exact thing, but BMI collects... Any of your royalties that are played, uh, your, your songs that are played in bars, clubs, restaurants, uh, anywhere in coffee shops, they collect the public performance royalties. Okay. Um, radio, um, they collect all that. Like, there's any time your songs play out in public, BMI, ASCAP, there's CSAC. There's actually nine PROs in America. I don't know the, I know GMR is one thing, that's the one Drake's signed to. Um, there's like some more, but. Yeah, we don't need any more PR, PROs in America. We don't need any more. Um, then you have Sound Exchange. Sound Exchange collects anything that's non-interactive. Non non-interactive means Pandora, Sirius Radio. Uh, it's like stuff you can't control. Right. Like okay. Non-interactive. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So then BMI ass clip, the interactive stuff. Okay. So. Just like the Spotify, the Apple Music. Right. So, so I guess what's the difference between um, like the streaming payouts and then like royalty payouts on the back end? Is it the same thing, pretty much, or is, it, is that like is that two different sides of the of the same coin? So actually, right now it's a crazy story. Uh, like you can get you get so Spotify actually playing two royalties out: mechanicals and public performance. Okay. So, but they're looking to change that by twenty twenty one with this new. Well, the MMA just passed, the Music Modernization Act. But there's this new entity. It's the Mechanical Licensing Collective. It's going to be a new building. It's going to be, well, entity, whatever, that's going to be focused on collecting 
mechanical licensing. Okay. It's going to be in Nashville. It hasn't even it has not even built yet, but it's going to be in Nashville. Um, so yeah, they right now you're getting paid off of mechanicals and pub performance. But what in the future they're trying to do this thing where Spotify only pays one out of uh, one of the two. Okay. Um, yeah. So that's it's called selective withdrawal. This they just I just went to this publishing thing and heard a lot of stuff and it was a lot of information. But yeah, as right and so Harry Fox uh, to bring that up. They cleared all the mechanical licensing. Mechanicals is anytime you song stream, download, or play, that's mechanical license. Okay, okay. So, is it, I guess, so uh, uh, another thing I, I do hear a lot, I get a lot of questions from artists about is publishing deals, right? Mm -hmm. um, it, it seems to me like a, a lot of artists are looking towards publishing companies to kind of get these deals to kind of get some of that money to offset career costs instead <laughs> of going like the traditional labor route. Right. So I guess from your experience, one, is that is that like a smart idea to take, to take some of these advances against like your, your royalties and stuff? Yes. And then two, what does it, what are metrics that these companies look to from artists before they even consider handing out bags to these artists? That's a good question because like I tell people, like it's people that I see they say, hey, I want a co-pub deal. Done songs with like any and everybody in the industry, mm -hmm. but you can't bring me the data or your royalty statements that show you are credited on that. Mm -hmm. So you need to have an admin deal in the beginning where you just, um, admin deal basically is, you own 100% of the copyright, somebody's just put in the metadata and making sure it's managing your catalog and this straight administration work. Um, protecting your licenses and all that. Um, but yeah, so, and to answer your other question, if you want a co-pub deal, if you're a country writer, yeah, you should sign a co-pub deal. Mm -hmm. That works out in country because I just seen some friends that it works out for them. Like they're serving tables and now so they get a co-pub deal, but they're not, they focus on that, that's their job, you know? Mm -hmm. Hip hop, it's a little different. Like they want to hold you against your royalties. I'm not. I'm. I'm just saying. I've seen that. That is a go real hip hop. Don't do co pub deals in hip hop. Mm -hmm. Keep ownership of your copyright, because um, you can still just as you still get money from a label. Um, if you really want money that bad, do an admin deal for two to three years. Go to a bank. Be like, hey, this is my data. This is what I'm bringing to the table, and I want X amount of dollars because I'm already bringing X amount in. So you have to have something, it's like startups, you know, yeah. they need to see the plan, the pitch and all that. Um, history, all that. Type right, of stuff. exactly. Okay. You know, so they can follow the projections. Like that's what they want to see. It's finances at the end of the day. You mm -hmm. know, it's, if you did a song that was, you know, it's got, it's doing good on YouTube, but not doing good in the public performance world, then, you know, you can see, okay, look, like, you're doing good here. So we can at least see that. Yeah. You know, the fact you have something to show somebody is just amazing. Okay. So, okay. So I do, I want to kind of like backtrack a little bit because it's still something that confuses me a little bit. Okay. So I know if it confuses me, it's probably confusing hundreds of other people out there. So explain to us, and you did touch on it a little bit, but explain to us the different types of royalties. Like what are the different types of royalties that artists should be looking out for? Mm -hmm. And then like, I guess, when are they applicable? Like when does that certain royalty like apply to an artist okay so royalties right yeah so you have mechanicals <clears throat> that's what harry fox um there's other digital services that collect that but yeah mechanicals anytime you song stream or download um mechanicals then you got public performance anytime your song play in a public setting which is bars restaurants clubs uh karaoke then you have synchronization so synchronization is also film and TV, but YouTube, that is sync license. Those are sync royalties as well. Mm -hmm. um, so YouTube usually takes about three, four months to kind of like figure it like, hey, YouTube is a really dumb computer, so you have to like stay on it to make sure nobody's mm -hmm. claiming stuff on your, um, on your, on your song. So, and, and how publishing works in royalties um, anytime a song doesn't equal 100% or it's more than 100%, mm -hmm. 
nobody gets paid. It's called a dispute. Um, I clean up. I do it. I clean up in like most of my clients' thing. A client's catalogs called metadata restoration. So like every so three months, I just do a cleanup. Mm. Um, it's like cleaning your house or something, but just kind of make sure everything is flowing right. Royalties are going through um, while they creating the music. But um, disputes can ruin payments if people are not on that. That's why you have people like me to stay on it. <laughs> In the paperwork, right? Right, yeah. So, um, so I guess even that, so I, is, is as far as the paperwork aspect of having anything together, is it just the split sheet that needs to be in order or is it more to it? Is there more to like royalty tracking that helps you guys do your job better? Um, the Roy, the split sheet is mostly for um, everybody who's in that studio session or whoever um, added value, created, contribute to the track mm -hmm. to make sure they get what they deserve for p what they put in. Mm -hmm. That's what the split sheet is there for. So usually when I'm talking to the publishers, we talk and we're like, okay, cool. And then we register the works. And once that happens, it's on us to kind of track it. So the PRO system is basically, they pay quarterly. Mm -hmm. So it's four times a year. Okay. And YouTube is once you, about four months, maybe maybe five, but four months, then it pays out monthly from like the last month. It's like rent, basically. So the previous month, so August you would get paid from the month before August, July, and then, but yeah, so. Okay, and you said, the money that's pretty much not accounted for during that time goes into the, the, the black box period that you were talking about. Yeah. So I guess talk a little bit more about that. What What's the time window for that? Like how long do you have the claim stuff before it goes to that period? And then like, I guess once it hits that black box, is it just like the money's <laughs> going on forever? Or like, are, there, are there things you can do to like go back and get it? <laughs> that's a good, that's a good question. Um, so the black box, how it works is, they say you have two to three years. Okay. This, that's what it is right now. Um, that's from Sound Machine, BMI, ASCAP. You have two to three years to collect that, um, the royalties. Uh, YouTube, same thing. Two to three years. That's just standard. Mm -hmm. Two, three years. Um, so usually what happens in the black box, what happens, uh, BMI, ASCAP, pay out the market share. Like, so all this money that is accounted for that people didn't claim goes to like, say Beyonce was, she collected 60% of the market share in the songwriter royalties. Mm -hmm. So they take them royalties and give it to her. Okay. And then BMI ASCAP won't still money there. They're just like, okay, we'll just keep it to pay our salaries for our companies. Okay. Okay. The overhead and stuff like that. So, so the artist today, let's say, let's say somebody watching this mm -hmm. puts out a song today. That song, let's not say it blows up, but let's say it does really well, and they don't have it registered. And then the two years goes by. Let's say they meet somebody like you, and you tell them like, "Hey, man, this hasn't been accounted for. Everything before that period." Is it like back collections from it? Like, are they being paid out on money they've been missing out for those years? Or is it just like that ass out and it starts at the period where you catch it from there on out? That's a good question. Is it, it's mostly depends on the relationship. If like a publisher like me go in and I go talk to BMI and sit down with them on ASCAP, uh, they don't like that. They don't, that's their job, but they don't like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I don't care if they don't like what I say. They don't, they need to get off their ass and do their <laughs> job. I don't care. Like, they, PROs will not exist in five to 10 years. Let's just be real. All right. They, computer is just out of date. They just, they're not, they're not even monitoring half the stuff that's out there. Mm. Like it's all, the system was based on 1911. For ASCAP was the first PRO. And basically their market was, to monitor stuff that I played on the radio. Okay. ASCAP was the first PRO in Nashville. BMI came along because ASCAP wouldn't play the black jazz people. So BMI was like, oh, we're gonna start something. BMI stands for Broadcasting Music Incorporated. Mm -hmm. So they were like, all right, we'll take the black musicians. And they came in and was like, hey, we'll help y'all out. And that's how BMI started. 
Um, CSAC came later, and I don't, their history is a little different. They actually work, they work, um, but being my ass cap, no rap beef, but just work, man. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> but their technologies does not keep up with, they're just not designed for today's model of the music industry, digital and streaming. Is it because it's so fast paced compared to the yeah, yeah, it's just, okay. um, like, it's just so much music and like, when you when you go put in a claim, you gotta stay on these people. Like you gotta really stay on them. And like it's like, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> um, my job is to go collect it. And like, what are you doing? Like you can't help me out. Like um, they claim they're busy, but their whole job is to make sure that businesses are paying them a blanket license so they can stay in business. Mm. So really, every business. Whether it's a doctor's office, uh, the mall, the Greenbrier Mall, or Linux, or whatever business it is, um, gas stations, they pay, uh, was it Olive Garden? They all pay a blanket license to the PROs to use music in their establishments. It's the law. If you don't, you can get shut down. Oh, it's not. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's real. Like, they're, they're coming after people. Like, they have people that sit there all day. Just to call business and hey, just to let you know you pay your your license, you know. But what about these songwriters that need to claim their royalties? Yeah, that's more important to me. Yeah, true. So I mean, that's the side I'm on. So, but yeah, I mean, counting on businesses to get that. I get it, but you got to pay. But it's got to be a better system, which there is gonna be because technology is gonna disrupt the PRO system. All right, um, and this is this is kind of backtracking a little bit, but I, I literally just thought this question yeah. is so for those those artists who are let's say they're not going after the traditional like artist model, artist lifestyle. So for those artists who want to either be more so songwriters or people in the background, or maybe even just do let's say they just want to be like commercial artists. Like I just want my music in commercials and TV shows. Are are publishing companies? Um, I guess are they the main gateways into those world? Like, are they, or is it like if I wanted to be a songwriter, would I need to go through like a well-established publisher that can shop me to different people? Is that the role of a publishing company? Or? Yeah, it can be, but it's a lot of. What that is is basically relationships. Okay. Like, okay. Um, there's people that just make music for video games. There's people who just make music for TV shows. There's people who just make music for actually movies like the composers composers basically yeah um so there's different worlds of that and then there's composers just for trailers mm. then there's composers just for promos so it's it's very niche and once you like once you find your your thing you're good at you're probably just gonna stay right there and you can be self-published that's totally fine you know you can be self-published or just to have an admin person just take care of make sure you're getting paid mm. um yeah i was i did some work with a guy and basically, he was just getting uh, advertisement, like Zaxby's, um, Wells Fargo. Mm -hmm. um, so advertisement, he's just doing the music for advertising for that. And that's still, that's PRO money, because mm -hmm. it's public performance. Um, but yeah, it's sync license. And then there's also a thing in LA, in Nashville, that's maybe in New York, there's just sync artists. Sync artists are just artists that, so you, there's a band called the Black Keys. You probably won't hear, you hear their music everywhere, but some, like, uh, I don't know, like a n not established commercial company can't afford a million dollar song for like 30 seconds. They yeah. use the Black Keys, so they find an indie band, they can pay maybe only 50,000, and then they, get, they keep their royalties or whatever. So there's sync artists out there, sync bands, like I encourage that, that's like, you don't have to be an artist like, oh, I'm just an artist, I'm gonna go on Spotify. I mean, that's cool, but have a plan. Like, if you could, a sync artist is a good way to make a living. Yeah. So, like, you can just do that songwriting, making beats. The sync era is, that money's is, oh man, that money's, man. That money's amazing. Yeah, it's like money, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I've, seen, I've seen some of those checks. They'll shake it. It's like money. <laughs> they can change your life. You can buy a house. <laughs> 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 okay. Okay. Um, so yeah. I, I guess just I guess just kind of to wrap it up, man. So what what I've gotten out of this conversation is that 
publishers pretty much help you protect your intellectual property, right. your masters, your sound recordings, and help you get the most of your money out of it, right? So right. I guess what would be a checklist or I guess a, yeah, I guess checklist is probably the best word, a checklist for an artist to make sure they have all their ducks in a row when it comes to their publishing and their dealings with these songs to make sure like they don't, they don't get fucked in the long run. Right. Um, if you're uncomfortable after you leave a session with um, like not talking the splits, mm. you either have a manager or me. Um, I'm not a, I don't go after people like a bill collector, but I, I make it a point to be persistent. Like, mm. hey, let's try to register the song. So some kind of split sheet. You need some kind of uh, whatever that is, like a split sheet or you do it on your phone. I miss, there's cool apps out there. There's the lab. This is Oddly, this Jamber. There's cool apps that do digital split sheets that are real cool technology. Um, but then again, you gotta have people <laughs> that agree on the splits. Mm -hmm. If they make a great song, that's awesome, but can we agree on the splits? Yeah. So I guess splits is the main thing. Um, uh, and this sick title chip publishing was going on if you have a you know admin person or a manager uh, don't let nobody who doesn't know publishing register your songs because then somebody will get really angry on the other team. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think the biggest thing is just uh, split sheets, make sure you're signed up with a PRO, and just kind of keep track of all the emails that you do, like you contact with people. Let's keep kind of keep track of that so that helps the publisher or your manager of like, okay, we can find this person if we need to to go uh, change something if we need to. Um, this organization is key and keeping good relationships. So relationships, split sheets, um, sign up with a PRO, and that's really about it. And just um, contact me if you need anything. <laughs> okay. Don't be afraid to hit me up. Okay. So I'm, I'm cool with that. Okay. Um, and, and then the last question before we close it out is, you, you did touch on a little bit. You said that you would recommend the artist starting a publishing company. Mm -hmm. But like, what exactly does it look like to start? Like, what does that process look like? What do they need to do? So when you sign up with a PRO, mm -hmm. uh, there you BMI. Let's say we use BMI first. Um, you sign up with BMI, and then you can sign up with a songwriter. But then go back around, sign up as a publisher. Mm -hmm. So it's $150 on the sole proprietor. You don't have to do LLC because it's like, I think 250 or something. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do LLC, you can do sole proprietor. Um, but you have to choose three names just in case one of the names is taken. Like, you know, you know the Brand Man Publishing or, you know, Batman and Robin Publishing. Make sure it's the same, whatever. Mm -hmm. But three different names and then that do their work and like, okay, this name registered, you're good to use this name. And that's from there. You can use the link to your own bank account, mm. you know, and then your admin person just kind of takes care from there. All right. So, know? so starting the publishing company is the easy part. It's finding the qualified admin person to run it. Just yeah, you just need to find somebody that actually knows what they're doing to run their yeah. It's, and then same thing with ASCAP. You just go in, put your name in. ASCAP is fifty dollars to sign up as a writer, and then fifty dollars a publisher. And there's a hundred dollars total to sign up for both. Okay. And same thing, you choose, you choose three names, and from there, um, they'll pick the one that works, and you just use that one for ASCAP, you know? So, like, I'm a publisher, so I have to sign up with all three, ASCAP, CSAC, and BMI. I have to use all three, because I got a writer with CSAC, um, I have a writer with BMI, I have a writer uh, with uh, ASCAP, BMI, ASCAP, CSAC, yeah. Okay, so. okay, okay, cool. So. Legal entity, sole proprietorship, or LLC, you recommend sole proprietorship. Register that with one of the PROs and find you a, a, a trusted admin person. Right. Your publishing company is solid, legit, mm -hmm. good to go. Okay, cool, man. All right, man. So I guess other than that, man, let them know. I guess, actually, before we get to that, man, because um, we didn't really touch on stuff you got going on. So I guess educate them on like what you're doing now, how you're helping artists, and then let them know. How they can find you and reach out to you so they can get somebody in that in their corner that knows what the fuck they're doing. All right, for sure. Um, 
right now I'm just trying to establish more black network of publishers, whether it's, I mean, Atlanta, of course, but um, publishing is not a competition. We're all in this together because you got a publishing company, I have a publishing company. If we have two producers that can make great music together, we both benefit. Yeah. So it's like, it's a team effort at the end of the day. Um, for Atlanta to not have publishing companies, I don't know how we missed that. Um, Nashville's built on publishing. So what I'm working on is building this network of publishers. This, it just needs to be more of us doing it. Like that way you own your asset. We need to own our intellectual property. We need to own that. That's amazing we can own something. Mm. Um, so that's what I'm building right now. Just mainly just, you know, signing people left and right and just building beautiful network. Cause at this point it's just connecting dots. Like someone's like, hey David, I need help with this project. I need a, um, a guy can mix it. Well, this producer actually mixes and then I need somebody to top line the songwriter. I got this guy that knows this girl that actually can write great melodies on top of, you know, uh, top lining basically. Mm. So it's just just making people, uh, intro, making intros throughout. That's what it is relationship wise. Publishing is a long game. It's definitely a long game. Um, it's not overnight success. It's definitely a long game. Um, but you'll benefit if you just stay in it. Um, that's that's the big thing. In relationships, just, just relationships, just talking to people. Because we all want to make, um, I mean, everybody's about to have publishing companies now. Like, that's the biggest thing. Like, um, WWE has a record label and a publishing company. So they own that content. Oh, because they're doing, they make like original music. They do yeah. like original music. They're Actually, like, yeah. yeah, my client who made the music for WWE is Jim Johnston. He's one of my, it's crazy that I get to work with him. He's an amazing guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he made the music with Stone Cold and Rod Undertaker. But anyways, um, any hip hop guys want to collab with Jim Johnston, you know, if you like wrestling, you know, he's ready to do some stuff. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's ready to, we're ready to make that jump. Like, mm -hmm. it's just different, you know. Um, just trying to stay innovative as well. Um, mm -hmm. I'm always looking out for the, I'm, I'm always looking how the future of music licensing and, and publishing is going to benefit uh, us publishers in the long run. Mm. Like Twitch and all these other streaming platforms where like esports is involved. How that's what I'm working on also is like how are we going to benefit from this? Like how because right now it's still up in the air and saying we're not getting paid, but there's money there, but it's not you know it's not a lot because nobody's it's still new. Mm. So basically trying to be if this on the cutting edge of making sure we're staying on top of everything as publishers, <laughs> making sure we're getting paid. Like, uh, and our songwriters, that's the main thing. We take care of our songwriters, producers, and our artists as well. All right, well, I, I know that I said that was the last question, but you just said something that made me think of one more question. Nah, so, no, so whenever a new a new platform comes up, right, like TikTok, um, we'll just say any, any new platform pops up that deals with audio, is it, do those platforms have to kind of tap in with 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 you guys to make sure everything is okay, or is it like this is new territory? We gotta kind of like get in there, figure out what's up, figure out who we need to report to. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. Okay. 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 Yeah, it's a good question. So that really is what happens. <laughs> There's um, an organization called the NMPA, the National Music Publish Publishers Association. Basically, they're like I can't say mafia, but they're the guys that kind of go be like, yo, what's up? Yeah. You know, we see content over here, we see music. So, you know, um, <laughs> yeah. But it's the more of the bigger publishers. So per good thing you said that. So actually right now, I'm trying to figure out how to get the money for Genius. I'm any publisher, they pay royalties for my client's work because his lyrics are copywritten on that. So this, the lyrics are on that page. Mm -hmm. And they say on their site, they pay, they have a deal with Universal, Sony, Warner, all the big publishers, and the M MPA. But I'm an indie guy, and I reached out to these people, hey, they need to claim my royalties. Nobody's gonna say anything. What's, you get you get royalty payments for having a lyrics on lyric websites? Yeah. I know that. Well, it's ads. You see all the ads popping yeah. up? Yeah. There's money. Okay, I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah. So I'm right now trying to figure out Hey, if Genius, if you're watching, 
Yeah, I know the money is like I, I can find the dollar. <laughs> That's why you want to hire me. I can find the money, and I'm going to find the money. So there's money on Genius. If you got as women guys, there's plenty of people right now with a lot of stuff on Genius. Don't even there's money just sitting there, yeah. and then the money just sits there with Genius. They have it, so they have a deal the N M P A. So they told the N M P A told me, yeah, I put them on blast that I need to sign up and they'll take a cut of my royalties. I said, hell no. Why would I do that? Yeah. This is my money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So not signing up with the NMPA. I don't care how they feel about it. That's what it is. I mean, it's, I mean, it, some people just gotta, you know. I mean, black publishers are not a thing, which is somebody needs to just be that person. I mean, I call it the ruckus. I don't care. Um, I'm going to fight for what's right for us, though. I'm not just, like, spazzing my mouth, sucking somebody I don't know. Um, I mean, I have, I still have respect for what people are doing, but you also got to speak out in the entertainment industry, as you know. Yeah. Like, if you don't, then people just, you know. And yeah. then, So, like, what do you feel about, since you've come to Nashville a couple of times, how do you feel the comparison is to Atlanta and Nashville? Um... I mean, when I was out there for the IEGO conference, I was talking to someone about how Nashville feels like the the, the white Atlanta. That's the best. <laughs> that's, the, that's the best way to put it. Where it's like they're both these two really big like music industry cities, just on opposite sides of like the spectrum. So it's like they're all going hard for these practices and and, and like pushing for the country and the rock culture. Whereas, like, here in Atlanta, we're going a lot harder for the urban culture, like rap, hip-hop. Same mission, same goal, same everything, different genres of music. Right. That's, a, that's, a, that's what I got out of it. Yes, you're totally right. So, you know what's crazy about country country music? This is going to open your eyes. Country music is the only genre of music that has association that runs it. Okay. CMA. Okay, okay. Rock. Hip hop, reggae, gospel has a little association, but it's not, you know. The country music, they haven't figured it out. <laughs> they have the CMA thing is they a genre of music is ran by association. It's mm -hmm. not going anywhere. Hmm. So, it's, so it, it's, I guess, because what I did notice while I was out there talking to like a, the producer I told you we were talking about earlier mm -hmm. and some of the songwriters is they really talked about country like if you one don't come through Nashville <laughs> then not only if you like if you are an aspiring country music artist and mm -hmm. you don't go through Nashville you don't go through these people you will not have a career in country music and so it sounds like a lot of that ties into the CMA controlling everything yep okay so like <laughs> There's country artists, of course, in Austin, but the Austin, but if you, it's just a different, they don't really, Nashville doesn't really, they, it depends. If they know the right people, they'll get in the door. But if you don't, mm. they just stay in Austin, Texas. They don't really come to Nashville. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And there's country artists in LA, but it's a little different. That's why the pop country kind of stuff kind of coming in. Yeah. But still like Nashville's like nah you gotta come through Nashville yeah you know it's kind of like Atlanta you can't be a rapper and be from you know Dothan Alabama yeah. <laughs> you probably can't I mean you can but like it looks your well, image I, I mean I would argue like like I said based on like I said what you're saying now in those conversations I had with people at IE book is that that is what it seems to I think that's why rap is doing better than country as a genre. Oh yeah, is because rap isn't being moderated. It's not. It's no like, like, like it can It could be like a kid in the, the back fuck of nowhere in Ohio that grows <laughs> up and and makes it. Whereas like you're saying with country, it's like yo man, you can make country music in these different places, but if you want to be a country star, you gonna have to come through us. And yeah, like, I think that regulation of the process is what's slowing the genre. Down, at least from the yeah. outside looking in, like yeah. it's like, cause I look, like I said when I was there, man, it's like y'all, like you said, like they got the money, they got the infrastructure, they got all the businesses there. But the one question I kept hearing at that conference is, okay, we have all these things that these rappers don't have. Why is rap music dominating? 
know what I'm saying? The digital, the streaming, yeah. the SoundCloud. I mean, SoundCloud is YouTube. Just the fact that we can make music right now and put it up on the internet and not have to go through a label and like get cleared to see, oh, was the image right? Or we got to, you know, put PR behind it and like get all, you know, the, mm-hmm. the works of it, you know, like your PR is whatever you make it, you know, like somebody can make, do a viral dance to your song or whatever, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's a good point that digital and streaming, the gatekeeper world is just different. All right. Uh, all right, man. Yeah, that was a, this was a cool conversation, man. Uh, I learned a lot, man. So I guess before we dip out, man, let them know where they can find you, how they can get in contact with you. And, you know, you know I'm sure a lot of them want to hit you up after this, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, can you put my like Instagram tag right here? Yeah, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> I see it. Uh, David Pelham, P E L L U M I I. Not like New York, I I, but I I. I have it on the screen for you guys. I have it in the description section is below. And as always, if you feel like you learned anything today, please like and share this video. Hit those post notifications as well as I wouldn't want you to miss anything. Once again, my name is Corey. This has been my guest, David, and I will see y'all next time.